Hello, we're going to continue with Kirchhoff's laws. Uh, previously, we looked at what are Kirchhoff's laws, right? You know the observation. Now you put a name to it. Lo. Oh, that law called Kirchhoff. Okay, uh, but we're going to continue looking at Kirchhoff's law and your circuits will slowly get more and more complicated. But don't worry, you'll be equipped with the skills to hopefully solve them. Anyway, today we are going to look at ta -da, how to use Kirchhoff or Kirchhoff. Oh, did I say Kirchhoff again? Never mind. Kirchhoff's law to derive equations. So when you see this word derive, it means we're going to look at the origin story of some equations already. So what are the equa uh, equations for combined resistance? There's two of them. If your circuit is in series, okay, refresher of chapter 19, then your total resistance will be all the resistors in series R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus however many you want. No? If you have resistors in parallel with your battery, parallel. Then you have to do this funny, funny thing called 1 over R total equals to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 and so on and so forth. Of course, if you want to find R total, then you have to rearrange all. R total equals to invert everything. So, you can see. 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Wait a bit. Negative 1. The negative 1 means 1 over. Okay, la, just a reminder. Okay, so we're going to learn where these equations come from. Because you use it, you must know where it comes from. Then, of course, we're going to look at some refreshers of chapter 19, how to apply these two equations in all different kinds of situations, different kinds of circuit. Okay, let's go and see how to derive the equation for resistor in series. That's the first one. To do that, I'm going to use one note because it's easier to write. Anyway, here we have a classic circuit. You have a battery. I put a dotted line. Three resistors connected in series. So I'm going to call this resistor 1, resistor 2, and resistor 3. What's inside this battery? Well, you have the battery, battery EMF. We use this thing. But also to symbolize that your battery has internal resistance, let's include that as well. So little resistance. So let's call this small r. This one we call EMF. Okay? So in this case, only one battery. So the current will flow out of the battery. We call this current I. Sure, let's call it I. Then you have a current flowing through the first resistor, so we call this I1, call this I2. You say, Miss, shouldn't it all be the same? Okay, wait, yes, hang on, hang in there, hang in there. Okay, then the current will flow back. Same current flowing through everything, because you know, charge cannot go anywhere. So the first thing we need to think of is dun, 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 dun. what I just said. You have current I. I equals to okay. this i is the same as this i1 which is the same as the i2 is the same as i3 just in series man the same current will flow through and what law is this conservation of what we say conservation of charge because your charge has to go somewhere they can't just appear or disappear so this is actually Kirchhoff's first law k1 that deals with current okay k1 is Kirchhoff's first law Let's do another thing. Let's use Kirchhoff, Kirchhoff's second law. Now the second law says you have your potential drop across your EMF. This one here. Let's call this E. La. I already write that E. No need to write again. I need to make this a bit smaller. So we have E. Then this total energy supplied to the circuit should be equal to all the potential drops. So you have this potential drop called V1, this potential drop called V2, this potential drop called V3, and of course you have this tiny one from resistor which kind of what we call the loss volts. Okay, You have EMF but you lose some loss volts so what actually goes to your resistor is a little lesser. So if you add them all together, EMF equal to you have V1, V2, V3, and also VR, if you want to take that into consideration. And this, of course, you can rewrite into what we say, IR, IR, or all those things. Uh, let me just rewrite this. So, we have V1, which is I1 times R1. I1 here, I1, R1, I2, R2, because V equals IR, okay? So, I2, R2, V... Why did I write V? Just use this. Erase. 
Now it's working. Okay. So next one is I3. I3, R3, and then of course, what's the current flowing through this 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 um internal resistance? Just I R la. Okay la. I R. So we have I R. Okay. And this one E is what? E can just V equals to I R, E equals to I R. But what I, what R? You can just have the big I times R total. Total resistance of all these resistors in the circuit, so R total. Then, what do you do with this thing? Oh, also this one is which law? Ah? <laughs> this PD, sum of EMF equals the sum of PD, Kachow's second law, so it's K2. So don't confuse what is the K1, K2. Then, what do we do next? The third step is, you have two equations. So, if I do, see, divide equation 2 by equation 1. If I do, then what do you get? 2 divided by 1. You take IRT divided by I. So, that's left RT equals to I1R divided by I, which is the same thing. IR divide everything by I, la, then all gone ready. Lo. So, all you left is RT equals to R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus mini R. And where have we seen this before? This is the equation for resistors in series if you have anything in series you just add their resistance together done okay so that's how you can deal with things like that now what if you have resistors in parallel how do you derive the equation to calculate that okay this is the other one ah so same thing we have emf battery i i'm lazy to include the resistance so i'm not gonna yeah sorry uh, internal resistance also for for now let's just look through this okay so we have E, and the current will come out of the battery. Let's call this I. Then as you come to OO, what is this called? A junction. Ah. Then you will have a current split. Some current will turn right, some current will go down. Let's call the one that turn right I1. Then come here, split again, got another junction I2. Split another junction I3. Also, we can give this resistor some names. Why not? R1, R2, R3. 10,000 ohma, 5 ohma, whatever la, you choose the ohma. Okay, so now we got the main thing set up. So we're going to do something very similar to what we did just now. First step, I want you to think of the current. How does I, I1 and I2 and I3 relate all this? How does all this orange color I relate? Are they all the same? No, you think of, oh, actually they split. I, the original one, is actually all of them added together. So you can write long I1 plus I2 plus I3. This I1 split into I1 plus I2 plus I3. I, I, the same. This is what law? Ah? We have seen this before. What law is this called? This is Kurt Koff's first law. The current one, ah, conservation of charge. Okay, your charge has to go somewhere. So when they split, they split out what you have, you split. Okay, then the second step, you might have guessed, we're going to do something similar also. You want to think about the sum of PD. Ooh, this one is kind of interesting. So yes, you have EMF that is providing energy to the circuit. But what is the potential difference across each of these um, resistors? Think of it this way. All these lines are in parallel, right? So... If your this one here have a, a PD of E, means your this one here have a PD of V1, this one PD of V2, this one PD of V3. And they are all the same. Why, let's say your E is 12 volts. That means you come up here, this is all 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. <coughs> My saliva dry already. 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. Then once you drop, then only you go down to zero. So here is 12, 12, 0, 0. That's a potential drop. You see the drop from 12 drop to zero. Because you must return at zero. So it gives all the energy. So this is all zero, 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 zero. That's why I call potential drop. Top of waterfall, drop down to zero. So the thing is, you can say now it's the ballet uh, the other way. E equals to V1, equals to V2, 
equals to V3. Where is this from? Kirchhoff's second law. So we put a note here, Kirchhoff's second law. This is true for uh, parallel lines. Okay, then you might have guessed the third step, what are we going to do? Third step, um, let's divide. Ah, you want me to write more steps? Okay, la, okay, la, okay, la. I want to write. La. I just say, let's divide. Say, so what shall we divide? Let's divide 2 by number 1 to get resistance because, you know, V equals to I, R. If I want resistance, I have to do V divided by I. Okay? So, 2 divided by 1, 2 is all the E, 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 E stuff. So, how to divide? Leh? You just say, law, every time got E, got V, it's the same thing. Actually, hang on a second. I noticed an error, not 2 divided by 1. Huh. Wrong way. This is 1 divided by 2. Why 1 divided by 2? Because you want resistance, so V divided by I later. Okay, so you'll see why in a mess second. So I rewrite I equals to I1 plus I2 plus I3. Okay, and this I, the first one orange here, is related to the EMF of the battery. So the first I is EMF of the battery divided by the total resistance. That's how you get the big I there. Okay, total resistance, all the resistors inside that. Okay. Then, the second I, let me rearrange a little bit, I equals to V over R. So, this one will be V1 R1. Then, I2 will be V2 R2. I3 will be V3 R3. You say, miss, this does not look like all the thing, but never mind. We want to divide everything by 2 ma. So when you see this or this or this or this, you can divide out. So I divide everything. The E is gone. The V is gone. Everything's gone. So all that's left is 1 over RT plus 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Because of, the reason is, I mentioned here, divide by E or V or V or V. Anytime you divide the whole, whole circuit by Number two already muscle, all this is gone. Divide both sides by E or V. Then you have this final equation. This is how you can combine the resistance or parallel resistors here. So R1, R2, R3. Combine, you find R total. You will see some books write it in another form. It's the same thing. But if you see them do RT equals to bracket. 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 or how many parallel lines you have, negative 1, it's the same thing because here see negative 1 over ma. Okay, so this is just another way of writing it. Might be easier to type in your calculator as well. Alright, so these are the two ways you can, you must know how to derive these two equations. They will ask you in paper 2. You'll see some practice questions that have that one. No? So now we're going to look at some example questions, how to use these two equations to solve circuit problems and simplify our life a bit. This first one is on page 30. Okay, go and see this out. Now, if you see, whenever you are solving for total electrical resistance, uh, here's two tips to help you solve all kinds of problems. Tip number one. If they want total electrical resistance between X and Y, you can assume that you're connecting a battery like this. Ding. Okay, la. okay. Total electrical resistance means they connect, okay? Then the second point is, okay, so I write here, battery. The second tip is, simplify in steps. Not Shopify, not Spotify, but simplify in steps. What does that mean? Because you look at this diagram, oh, you think, means is this parallel or resistor? I would say both for oh, It's parallel, but also, resist, but also parallel or resistor. Parallel or series, both is parallel and series. So what you can do is, Combine the series first, then parallel, then series, then parallel. So you see, for example, these three are in series. Because you can redraw, ma, and you don't believe I draw for you. Nah, this one. Then you have one, two, three. Drawing skills help, guys, in circuits. See? Series. Can recognize or not? So if you want to combine it, let's do the series part first. So first step, if you want to find total electrical resistance, you have to combine all these somehow. First step, combine all the series one first. So you add together. And it becomes one effective resistor. So what is this one effective resistor? 
10 plus 10 plus 10, 30 ohm. Okay, so you say 30 ohm. Then this one is still the same, oh, 10 ohm. Then, you see, simplify a bit already, right? Now it looks like a parallel. Okay, so can simplify some more. So, before you simplify parallel, remember to simplify the, combine the series ones first. Let's combine this. Now, to find total resistance, you need 1 over 10 plus 1 over 30. And if you want to flip this around in your calculator, already you can lah. Usually, I ask my calculator to do this work for me. You can write like this. But this one, depending on your calculator model, it might be very tricky to type in. Or you can do like this low. 1 over, eh, did I say 10? 1 over 10 plus 1 over 30, negative 1. Same thing. Anyhow you want to do it, you can do that. So if you calculate everything correctly, you should get 7.5 ohm. Which is this answer. So B. Now there are ways where you can guesstimate this. Kind of say less than 1 ohm. No, no, cannot be. 40 ohm? This one definitely out. Confirm out. Because 40 ohm is you add and all four together, so cannot be this, cannot be this. So you can guesstimate lah, okay? So that's the first question. Let's look at another one that uses these combined formulas. Here's one from October, November 14, paper 1, variant 1. Six resistors, each of resistance R are connected below. Ooh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. They never get resistance, oh, but they want you this thing. Ooh, combined resistance given to you now. 66 kilo ohms. Try this one out first. Pause the video and see how you can solve for this value of R. And then I'll go through it very quickly. Give yourself like, you know, two minutes or so. Try and see how to solve. Alright, so first hint, okay, I imagine this is the positive side of the battery, negative side of the battery. Okay, now we have to figure out how to combine. Well, they told us it's R, so let's just leave it as R. They give us the alphabet R, we write R, right? they give us something else, something else. Now, if you're confused, it's good to break it down into steps. For example, let's simplify this into one step. Ooh, the first step is... Can we simplify all this one into one and then this one into one? To do? This one you do long? One over R equals to well, let me just say the total resistance here will be one over R plus one over R, which is two over R. But this is one over R total. So you need to flip it upside down. So R total equals to R over 2. Okay, so this one is half R. R over 2, half R. Oh, it's small, cannot see. Then the third one, you do the same thing. 1 over R. Okay, uh, 3 over R is your 1 over total resistance. So your total resistance will be R over 3, which is 1 third R. Now you can add all three together. Therefore, yeah, series ready, ma. So your total of this step now will be R plus 1 over R plus 1 over 3 R. Did I say 1 over R? 1 over 3 R. And that will give you 11 over 6 R. How I get this? I press calculator. I'm lazy to do fraction. <sighs> then you need to find value of R. But they told you, hey, hey, they told you the total combined resistance is 66. So 66 kilo ohm equals to 11 over 6 R. Now can find R already. So find R. R will be 36 kilo ohm because it's 36 zero 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 ohm. So 36 kilo ohm. Then you look for the answer? Mm, this one. So this is the one that you are looking for. Okay. So don't panic if you see a lot of register. Break it down step by step. Combine if you can, combine if you can, combine if you can. Okay. Usually series parallel, series parallel, series parallel. You do step by step to make your circuit more simple to do. Lah. This question uh, on page 21 is like a puzzle. You see also your eyes scared already, but actually, actually quite easy to find if you know what to do. So on page 21, you have this question. I want you to try it out first. They give you a circuit that looks very complicated because there's a lot of drawing, but don't panic, stay calm. Open your eyes and look. The reading of the voltmeter is 8 volts. Label that. 8. And the reading of the voltmeter 2, where on earth is that? It's 1 volt. Okay, so that means the potential drop across this one is 1 volt. That's all we know. Okay. 
what are the reading on the other book meter? Ha, huh? how to find? And it gives you a whole bunch of values down here. Okay, and they want V3 and V4. V4 is this one, V3 is this one. How to start? Take this as a puzzle challenge to see if you can solve this puzzle. Well, don't take too long. Lah. Pause the video, try some time first. You try to try any method you want, see if you get the correct one or not. Then you play, then you see. Ah. Okay. So, hopefully you try it. If you did not, please go and try it. Because it's more effective solving physics questions than watching people solve physics questions. But anyway, first of all, I'm going to tell you it's B for now. Where's my mouse? There, B. So that if you were solving it and you want to check if you're right or not, okay lah. If you straight away lah, you can't check C. But how do you get B? That is the question. Okay. First things first. We know the PD drops across all of these. Drop here. Here got another drop. And well, across this whole mess, another drop. I'm just going to use one arrow to represent the whole voltage drop across this mess. All these PD drops should equal to 8. That's the clue we know. Hmm. So this one's kind of... We know all these are identical. So this one is R. It's also R. This is R, R, R. So we know the PD of... The PD drop of these two are the same. Let's just call it B and B. They have the same potential drop. Because same resistance, ma. But what is this? We need to find the total resistance here. Hmm. So let's do that on this space. So I'm going to find total resistance of uh, this part. Okay, there we go. So how to find? Okay, law. You draw, you simplify a bit. On top, you have R. Then at the bottom, you have 2. But you can combine them into 2R. Then you combine this thing. So what you get? 1 over this parallel resistance is 1 over R plus 1 over 2R. You have to do maths. 2 times 2. Okay. Times up and bottom. Ah, this is fractions. Ah. You forgot how to do already. Ah, it means we do calculator too long already. Okay, so solve this around. We should get RT equals to, so I will take in 3 over 2R, so 2 over 3R. That is the total resistance of this circle section. Okay, now we can simplify some more, I like. So the next step is, well, you don't have to do all these steps during exam, la, as long as you know what you're doing, but I'm doing this now so that you can see what is happening. So you have now a couple of resistors. This one is 2 over 3. There. And we're trying to find the reading of voltmeter. So we know these two confirm the same. V and V. This one, we don't know what it is. Let's call this V. V N. I just chose the alphabet. So you kind of, you might feel stuck, but don't worry, we know ratios. In fact, we can straight away use ratios to find this V3 already. Okay, this one right here. So what you can do is, you say, what is the value of V over the total, which is 8? And that is equal, same ratio as this R over the total R of the whole circuit. So that will be R plus R plus 2 over 3R. This is dealing with ratio. So the ratio of V over the ratio R. You can only do this if you have a series circuit like this because then all the potential difference is shared out between all these resistors. Okay? So if you do that, what you get for V? You plug your calculator, the R's will cancel out and you will get a V equals to 3. So that means oh, you have a 3 volt drop. Here also 3 volt drop. Means the whole big thing here will have how many? 8 minus 3 minus 3. 2 volt drop. And here we can solve pretty much almost everything already. Almost everything. Let's check. V3 should be 3 volts. Ayo, this is the only one correct. Ah. Ayo, then you'll find that one straight away can solve. V4 is parallels. Okay, so this one is 2 volt. The one down there also 2 volt. So 2 volt, no? 2 volt. Correct. In fact, that's the only correct answer. Uh, V2, if you want to find, is 2 minus 1 because 
if here is two, here is already given one, so this one must be one bolt drop. It's all about climbing up mountains and going down valleys, guys. Okay, so B is the correct answer for this one. You can guesstimate your way through, but this is one of the ways you can for sure, for real, calculate the actual value. Before we go to the final paper 2 question that I want to show you, I want you to take a look at this light bulb question. So it means this is not exactly resistors. So the principles can be applied and also you want to connect it to previous stuff we have learned. So might as well take a look at this light bulb question. So you have three identical lamps. Whenever you see identical lamps, okay, and also uh, identical means they have the same resistance. How many ohm, how many ohm, no? Same resistance. So we can like, you know, identical resistance like what we've been looking at. And also, they didn't say filament lamps. So you don't have to worry about their resistance changing. So they have the same resistance and which is constant because you didn't talk about filament, okay? Filament lamp uh, is the one where if you see that, you must think about how their resistance is changing with temperature. R with temp. Change in R with temp. Okay? That is the IV curve one. Go and review the chapter 19 if you kind of forgot that a bit. Forgot a bit. So we are connected to a battery with zero internal resistance. Very good. I like. As shown. Initially, the switch is closed. The switch is then open and then the lamp go out. So, at first, it's connected. Come on, I draw the before after. Before, it's closed. Lamp. Yeah, maybe I'll shake. Never mind lah. Then you open. Then this one no light already. The other one still got light. This one got light. This one got light. This one got light. So what I want you to do now is look through the choices and try to decide what you think will happen to the brightness of these bulbs once you open the switch. Be very careful. Think of it step by step, and we'll go through this together. Some very good tips for you to think about brightness in lamp. Pause the video, uh, take more time if you need to, okay? Please, ah. Uh. Alright, so brightness. First thing, whenever you see questions about brightness, it's related to the power of the lamp. P, power. Oh, uh, watts. The units of watts. So what happens to the power of B1 and B2 when the switch is opened? Okay. So first things, when it's closed and when it's open, what's the difference, ah? Uh? Let's say I give this bulb a resistance or what should I give it? R lah. This one is R. This one is R. Then the total circuit resistance will be what? Well, these two together in parallel will be R plus. Then the parallel part will be half R. So that will be 2 over 2R. So 3 over 2R. That is a total circuit resistance, so about 1.5 like that. Then once you open ready, A, it becomes a series circuit. Just R and R. So now your total resistance of the circuit is 2R. Oh yo, bigger already. Oh. So because now they are in series, only two bulbs in series, so you can say the total circuit resistance increase. Ooh, increases. The arrow up means increases. Okay, so how can we find the power? Not check, not check. We need more information. So if total circuit resistance increases, what happened to the current in the circuit? Yes. So this one, current. One, we consider this the I. La. Come here, it will split into I1, I2. Okay. So the, when your total circuit resistance increases, this is your total circuit current will decrease because more resistance must also decrease. Huh? Okay, so that means first of all you can already check and see. Okay, we know these facts and we know P equals to IV or we can say I square R or we can say V square R. In this case, you're looking at P of one bulb. So if you're looking uh, for P of B1, for example, this will be P1 equals to I1 V1. So current flowing through the first light voltage across the first light. But you see, oh, you say miss which one to choose. There's so many up here. Hmm. Here's a hint. 
you know R is constant. So I like to have more constants in my equation. So I probably use this or this. I will not use this because both I and V across the above is changing. Then Y in a bit. But so, okay, I repeat, uh, I'm not going to use IV because too many variables. I want more constant. I like constants in my life. Don't you like constants in your life? Okay, constants, constants. Okay, now we need to think about current through this bound. Okay, so confirm, uh, we know circuit current go down. Circuit current is this I here going through B1. Where's my mouse? This circuit current has gone down. So it's actually smaller than before. So that means, if you look at P equals to I square R, this has gone down, this is constant. Therefore, then only if this one constant, then you can say, oh, P also go down. So for light B1, you say brightness decrease. So it's either this or this. Decrease. So this one is up. Then what next? You need to think about light B2. Okay, let's think about light B2. Oh, I should label this P1, I1, R1. Something wrong in my computer lah, these few days. Suddenly all the color color gem here hang there. Okay, now we need to think about the second bulb, B2. This one. Is the current through B2 increase or decrease? Hmm. Oftentimes students will say, Oh, before that, current split into two bulbs. Now combine into one. So increase lah. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Yes, in that sense, it increased, but the total circuit current also decreased. Oh. So if you want to be sure, you have to calculate. So I'm going to show you how to use the V square over R to calculate it first. Right? So for the second bulb, ah, what is this? Highlighter comes out now. Anyway, so for second bulb, P2 here P equals to, let's look at I, we don't know, it increased but also decreased, so I'll show you later. So V square over R, and this is V2 R2. Let's think about potential differences. In the beginning, this whole circuit on the right can be kind of simplified into something like this. So you have the first bulb. Treat as a resistor la, aya, okay la. Although you may say miss, that's obviously not resistor. Hang in there, let me explain. So you have a potential drop here and potential drop here. This resistance is R. This one here you already found is a little bit bigger, so 1.5 R. Therefore, this V1 is bigger than V2. Okay, so right here V1 is bigger than V2. That's originally. But now, you have something different. So, it becomes only one bulb here. So, this is R and this is also R. Means now the potential drop is the same. V1, V2. So, V1 equals to V2. Okay. So, now, what happened to the, the, the brightness of lamp 2? You need to think a bit, law. At first, it is smaller, it takes less share of voltage. Now, they take the same voltage. So, if this one is 8 volts, then this one will take 4 and 4. Whereas this one, maybe it will take a bit more, maybe 5 and 3. Eh, sorry. Uh, 4, 3 and 5. This one, 3 volts, this one, 5 volts. Because more resistance, ma, so it will take more PD drop. Okay? So, there's more V across it now. So, this is increased. This is constant. Therefore, we say this is increased. So we look for increase, increase. The only choice that get you this is B, both correct. Okay, now you might say, mm, Miss, how, what, how uh, if you want to use the I square R, then how? You have to actually calculate the I before and after. Lo. Because uh, inside that you don't know for sure. Okay, so here you might say, you might be tempted to say, I1 and I2 is split, right? I equals to I1 plus I2. Therefore, now the whole thing is combined already. But don't forget that your I is smaller. So the current that flow through this thing might be smaller than I2. We don't know until you try. So what you can do is you just try, plug in some values. Huh? You give them some resistance. Let's say this one is 2 ohm. This one 2 ohm. 
you give your battery, I have 4 volt lah. Then you calculate the current lah. What is the current flowing through this? What is the current flowing through here and flowing through this? One by one, go and calculate. Okay. So it's risky sometimes to think of currents when you have parallel become series current, the light bulb, light bulb thing. Okay. So be very careful. There are three power equations. Some are easier to use than others. Some will get you confused. Okay. Now let's go look at the uh, paper 2 question that's about parallel and series resistors. Let's end this video with this sneaky question. Okay, it's a practice one, so you will have to try it out. Well, I can't force you, but go try this out. Um, the whole thing is two pages, so it take about 14 minutes. You know how I calculate these things, right? I count the total marks times 1.25, which is roughly how long you should spend per mark in paper two, and I get 14 minutes. So take 14 minutes to try this one first. It's okay if you're working this with a friend, you can brainstorm with your friend. And then come and we'll go through this question to talk about the little tricks and traps that may be lying around these things. Okay? So 40 minutes, go. Pause the video and go. Alrighty, alrighty. Let's see. Battery of electromotive force. Okay, blah. It's the same resistor. Same resistance X, but one is series, one is parallel. Now, before we actually solve the question, I want to remind you again of the assumption that we often, not assumption, misconception that we have. Just now I talk about light bulb, right? Here you see, oh, in series, so mm, current very big. Some people say this. Lah. Then here, oh, split in half already, then current must be smaller lor, compared to this one. Is this correct? Ah? Well, not quite in this case because, let's see why. First one, your battery here is 1.2M. They give to us, ma. Second one, they told us this one is 3M. 3.0M. That means, oh, this is 1.2 or so. Low. But then, this one is not smaller because this is half of 3 because you know same resistor so this is actually 1.5 m 1.5 m so yes although you may think of okay law parallel current split but then the, the total current actually increase because the resistance is different okay so keep that, keep that in mind i cannot simply say oh 1.2 split in two in a different circuit so should be smaller no you look 1.5 is bigger than 1.2 okay assumption assumption Misconception, ah, not the sum. Misconception. Okay, let me wrap this off so I can save this for later. Okay, so they gave us these things. And the first question, they asked us to do an interesting thing. They asked us to show. Show is a very important word. Show that the combined resistance is four times greater in this one than in this one. So show means you have to prove the answer. That's already given to you. So they want to see 4 times greater. How do you show? It's 4 times greater. And you must also give a conclusion. No? So the proof and conclusion. That's all you need to think about in your proof or show kind of questions. Okay. So if you see this one is 2 marks. Okay. You need to show some calculation and you need to state a concluding statement. So they want to say the combined resistance of these two resistors is four times greater than these two in parallel. So you need to show that. So what do we do? Well, you must label very clearly. Uh, this is a show. Uh, so every single step, you must say very clearly. So when in series, now don't say total resistance uh, because you cannot say this because total resistance will include this wall. Total R, you have to include R plus X plus X, but we only want these two. So don't use the word total. They might minus your mark. So in series, your series resistance, you can call it that, is x plus x is 2x. Then you say in parallel, don't say total resistance or so, just say the combined resistance. Ah, that's a better word. R combined, RC. The combined resistance, resistance will be 1 over x. Okay, this one plus 1 over x. For the other one, well, inverse that. And then you will have 
two x so half x. Okay, so you have shown their combined resistance, not total. Not total. You cannot say total because got internal resistance. Okay, just a little bit of language there, which will be helpful in part two. <clears throat> then what to do next? You already found your equations. Don't just leave it there. You will not get your two marks. You might only get at most one. Yes, you only get at most one if you do this. You must label also. So now you need to do a conclusion. You want they want four times greater. So you show them it's four times greater. So you do the ratio of re of combined resistance. Combined R. You can take um, series over parallel. So like series. Okay la, R series over R parallel. Equals to, you do 2x over half x. What do you get? What's the ratio? So x and x cancel out already. So you get 4. And you must say therefore, or you must say conclusion. Therefore, the combined, re combined resistance of resistors in series is 4 times greater than parallel. That means you have to write so long. Ah. Because you want to give the examiner no reason to cancel your mark or take it away. Because look at this mark scheme. Um, here. Okay. In series, 2x or x over 2. If you have shown 2x or x over 2, x over 2, okay. Then you must say the relationship, which one is greater than which. But you must also say and. And means you must have both. So you say which one is greater, but you must say four times greater. That's your A1. If you just say four times greater, but you didn't show working, you will not get your A1 because M is for method. So M1, A1. Make sure you show that. So if I mark these things, and it's working, yeah. So this one or this one, okay, you have an M1, and you must say greater than, but also four times, then you get your A1 mark. This is how you calculate your four times. Then you come to this question. They say, eh? Explain, oh. Okay, so your resistance is four times. Up here is four times greater than down there. But how come all the current oh, is not four times different? Eh? This one is not four times smaller than this. This is not four times bigger than this. Why? Think about this. Imagine you simplify the circuit. Something like this. Oh, your red color. Delete, 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 delete. Imagine you simplify to something like this. You combine that one into 2x. You set this one here. This one, you combine already, it becomes half x. Resistance, and then that. So yes, your resistor is bigger by 4 times. Okay, So this one times 4, you will get this. That's true. But that's not the total resistance times 4. Total R is not 4 times greater because you have this R resistor here that didn't change at all. Huh? So only this one times 4, this one didn't times 4. No. So you cannot say that the current will also change times 4 because of internal resistance. So you want to say mm, the total resistance, this is when the total, you want to differentiate between total and combine. Okay, the total resistance, including the, the internal resistance, is not four times bigger for series circuit. Or you can say the total resistance is not four times smaller for parallel circuit. I accept also. Lah. Then you must say why, because two marks. Because of internal resistance, which is constant. Didn't, it didn't change four times also, lah, so you cannot say. So because of internal resistance, which is so that's two marks here. Okay, now let me show you the mark scheme. Here, due to internal resistance, total resistance is not four times greater. So B1, B1. Okay, la B1 mark not too bad. Because B1, you can write it out of order. Ah, crash now. Let me restart. Okay, I'm back. Haha. <laughs> so this one is B1, B1. 
This one also tricky. You must think of internal resistance. If you hang there while you're solving this, make sure to make some notes um, of things to be careful and look out for. Okay, so we move on to this other part which talks about Kirchhoff's laws. How do you create equations from Kirchhoff's laws? The first thing you need to do is you need to remember what Kirchhoff's law is. Okay, second law, so the PDPD PD one. So circuit of figure 5.1. How shall I write this? Because there's not enough space. What you can do is think of your EMF first. What is the EMF of the circuit? E. Or if it's 12, you just say 12. La. There's two ways to write this. Okay, so you have started with E. Then what are all the potential drops? Drops of the circuit you can put as a positive value on the right side. So let's see. Current flows. The arrow is given to us this way. So we know current flow that way. So this means... For this resistor, this side is high potential. Then after you pass the D, become lower potential. So this is what we call a potential drop. A drop. Okay, it's a drop. Ah. So you can have I1 times R. That's how you write the drop. Then the rest also drop. Lah. I won't do one by one. High V to low V because current is flowing from high to low, like water flowing down. So you can just write the rest plus... Mm, current I1 X plus I1 X. Okay, that's your equation. La. You can simplify it to become mm, I1 2X plus R. You can also write it as 12 volts equals to, what's the current again? 1.2A. 2X plus R. Both are accepted. One mark. Then you do the same for circuit uh, figure 5.2. Okay, so you start out with the EMF, you go up. This is low potential, high potential. Okay, so just add, write your EMF. So EMF is, look at the circuit here. Uh, drop across the first one, which is your internal resistance. Plus, ooh, this part is interesting. Here. You kind of say miss here, then how? I2 split into what? Not only to split. Now here you already combine ma, I2 half x. So you just have I2 half x. Okay, la? I2 half x. Or x, oh yeah. Which you can simplify to be I2 r plus half x. Or you want to write the values in 12. I think this is 3 amps r plus half x. Okay, so give yourself a check mark if you got that right. One mark each only, yeah. So this one is A1, A1. A1, A1. Ding, ding. Now there comes the second part. Use your equation up there to calculate the resistance X. Use equation. You see, oh, these equations, or oh, you have a lot of unknown, right? Here you have unknown X, unknown R. Unknown X, unknown R. Eh? Two unknowns? Two equations means you have to do simultaneous equations. Here's how we can do that. Refresher. So you already have the first equation. I'm going to simplify a bit. 12 divided by 1.2 is what? Ah? 10. Okay, la, I just write out the whole thing. 12 equals to 1.2, 2x plus r. This is your first equation. Simplify. 10 equals to 2x plus r. 10 equals to 10 minus 2x equals to r. That's the first equation. The second equation is from the other one. So you have 12 equals to 3 r plus half x. 12 divided by 3, 4 equals to r plus half x. So 4 minus half x equals to r. This is our second equation. And you need to substitute out either x or substitute out r. But we want to find x, right? So sub out r. Long. So sub out r. So I have 10 equals to 2x equals to. 4 minus half x. You will see a lot of simultaneous equation substitution in this chapter. Because all the Kirchhoff's law, one loop, two loop. Ah, okay. Then what do we get? 6 equals to 1.5x. Then x will equal to 4 ohm. So 4 ohm is your answer. All that for one mark only. Yeah, lo. Actually, you don't need to write out every single step one. If you can solve straight away, this one is a what mark is this? Let me see. I wrote it down. It is a A1 mark. Means you have this answer. You okay now. 
I just show all the steps in case you forget how to solve uh, simultaneous equation. Mm, almost there, almost there. Okay. Power transform in one resistor. All right. When you think of power transform, you do a whole bunch of equations. But the convenient one is, you already know current given to us already. Ma. And resistor, of course, la, we just find 4 ohms. So, resistor. La. Let's use this one because we know this, we know this. V, you have to kind of do more calculation. You can use V also, la, but up to you. Okay. So, here we have I square R in figure 1.2. I square is 1.5.1. Resistance we just found is 4 ohm. Down there, if you say resist, uh, current is 3M, wrong. Current is not 3M. Look again. 3M is here. But when you come here, because they have the same resistance, 4 ohm, 4 ohm, this will split into even current. 1.5, 1.5. Ah, so don't use 3. Use 1.5 square. A lot of people got stuck in this mistake. They're too happy. Hey, got 3, use 3. Then you press calculator, you get 0 0.64. And that will be your ratio. 0 0.64. This is a 2 mark question. First one comes from your knowledge of I square R or whatever la, V square R, a power equation. You can either show it there or show it in the working. And of course, your final answer, A1 mark. Then comes the final finale. As all paper 2 questions will usually end with a, mm, a definition like this or a draw a graph kind of thing. Okay, so let's see. How do we do this? The resistors are replaced with filament lamps. <gasps> when you see the word filament, some bells should ring in your head. Ding, 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 ding. Filament lamp means their resistance will change. Depending on what? Depending on temperature, Depending, which depends on I or V. So you need to explain why the resistance of each lamp when connected in series is not the same as the resistance of each lamp when in parallel. So you put series, the lamp got another resistance. Parallel, another resistance. Why? Ah? So, Remember, I just say IV curves, things like that, okay? Good revision of IV curves. I have something like this. Yeah. If you don't know where this thing comes from, go and review chapter 19. So, how are you going to describe this thing? Well, you can say the current through each of them are different. Okay. So, Ayane, we just say up here, up, 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 up here. Current is 1.2 and then the other one is 1.5. So, the current through each lamp is different. So the current through the lamp in circuit 5.2 or you can say parallel is greater than the current series. Current through lamp in series la. Everything. Okay. True lamp in series. Therefore what is this curve thing? What do you call this thing? So, the resistance of the filament lamp changes following what? You can say it changes following current or V. Lo. Changes with I. Or V. You can say V also. Because I and V both change. Lo. So, this one is B1 and B1. B1 here, B1 here. You can either say greater than current or less than lamp in parallel. Up to you. As long as you have the idea which one is greater, which one is that. Okay. So this is the cause. This is the effect. Okay. Effect resistance change. Okay. So that's all for this one. Many marks. Many marks. Add them up. Okay. It's quite a tricky one with lamps and series and things like that. But go and try out some of the other questions. Because this is all for today. As a recap, just remember to know how to derive the equation, number one. Hopefully, you already know how to do that. Do I have my pen with me? Never mind. Oh, I do. Make sure you know how to derive that and make sure you know how to use, how do you apply these things. Be very careful with light bulbs, especially if they're filament, non-filament, power, which one is changing. And remember, there's a misconception I talked about. Okay, so... We'll see you on the next video where we'll continue to apply Kirchhoff's law in many, many different other kinds of circuits. And they will look more and more interesting as you go. Diamond shaped by triangles. 
Okay, but that's all for today. Bye bye.